So my name is Angelo Pinto with the Correctional Association of New York. Um, I work on the Raise the Age campaign. I'm the campaign manager at the Correctional Association. New York State is currently one of two states that automatically prosecutes 16 and 17 year olds as adults for any crime they commit. In New York, 13, 14, and 15 year olds are also prosecuted as adults for certain crimes. The Raise the Age campaign seeks to address that and raise the minimum age of criminal responsibility from 16 to 18, and also taking a closer look at what happens with 13, 14, and 15 year olds throughout New York State. The other piece that's important is that the 16 and 17 year olds can also be held in adult jails and prisons, so we want to make sure that doesn't happen as well. There's a great article called Million Dollar Blocks, and in the Million Dollar Blocks article, it explains that there's five to six neighborhoods in New York City that make up most of New York State's prison population, so over 70 percent. Those communities are your South Jamaica Queens, your South Bronx, your Harlem's, your East New York's, your Brownsville's, your Bedford Stuyvesant. These are the communities that have the highest concentrations of youth and adults who are being incarcerated. So most of the youth are coming from those neighborhoods. And also a lot of the youth have been system involved prior to coming into the adult criminal justice system. So they may have been in the youth justice system, they may have been in foster care or one of the other systems and they ultimately end up finding themselves in the criminal justice system. So you have youth who are coming from particular communities and you also have youth who are marginalized in a variety of different ways. Those are usually the youth you see who are the 16 and 17 year olds who are coming in contact with the adult system. So one of the issues that's important when you think about 16 and 17 year olds, and I think when you talk about youth in the youth justice system as well, is what folks refer to as the school to prison pipeline. So zero tolerance policies has essentially pushed youth out of schools. So youth now have suspension rates over the past 30 years have skyrocketed. Interestingly enough, incarceration rates over the past 30 years have skyrocketed as well. So you kind of see this relationship between increased suspensions and increased incarceration. So what happens is schools may have severe zero tolerance policies, which means for a variety of infractions, a young person can get suspended or even expelled. What happens, of course, as we know, when you're suspended or expelled is you're pushed out of school and you usually have to spend a significant amount of time home. What happens to a lot of these young folks is what folks consider school push out. So they're pushed out of schools into communities. And then oftentimes many of these communities, as I mentioned earlier, are targeted by police at high rates. So you have policies like stop and frisk now that are grabbing young people in these communities and adults. So the young people that are pushed out by the school to prison pipeline zero tolerance policies are kind of pushed into the hands of police on the ground engaging in stop and frisk. So that's a, in a very general basic sense how the school to prison pipeline or the education system is connected to the criminal justice system and what's happening with 16 and 17 year olds in New York State who are prosecuted as adults. And one of the things is if you have a felony conviction it kind of stays with you. Um, folks kind of say felony is like the new n-word in a lot of ways. The, fe the felony conviction can bar you from employment, it bars you from having getting educational loans if you want to pursue higher education. It also bars you from living with a family member that may be living in public housing. It bars you from a number of professional licenses. So the felony conviction bars you from a tremendous amount of opportunities that allow you to re-enter the community and be a successful citizen. And that's true for adults. So in New York, you're 16 and 17 year old, years old, you're considered an adult, so that felony will pretty much follow you for your whole life. And that's kind of on the extreme end of what can happen if you have a felony conviction. One of the things I often say to folks is once you come in contact with the criminal justice system, it's traumatizing. The moment of arrest, if nothing happens, if you actually get incarcerated and spend a day or two in jail, each of those moments are traumatizing. And the trauma, the trauma is like exacerbated the deeper you go into the system. So from arrest to arraignment to possibly being in a jail, prison, um, and then afterwards, if you have a criminal record and you're trying to re-enter the community and get education and your whole life is kind of um, thrown up in the air. So there's a tremendous amount of consequences um, for folks that may simply just be arrested and released to the folks who spend a year, two, 10, 20 years incarcerated. The other piece that is talked about is what happens when you're actually incarcerated. So let's say, <clears throat> excuse me, you spend time in an adult jail or prison there's a tremendous amount of physical violence. Um, there's a tremendous amount of psychological trauma folks experience. There's solitary confinement. So if you're a 16 or 17 year old in New York State, 
or in New York City and on Rikers Island, you can spend time in solitary confinement. There's been a study that said about 27% of all youth on Rikers Island spent time in solitary confinement. And solitary confinement has been found to have a, a tremendous amount of psychological impacts on adults, let alone children. And um, the UN has recently said that solitary confinement for any person under 18 is considered torture. So what you have happening is a tremendous amount of young people just experiencing harsh traumas from being incarcerated and then those traumas are exacerbated if they happen to be in solitary confinement. So they go through a tremendous amount of psychological traumas, particularly when they're in this very developmental stage of their life, when their brain's developing and even their sense of self socially is developing. What happens then is those young folks come back to the community. Most folks who are incarcerated are going to be coming home. And then the community has to deal with this maybe new psychological challenge that this young person has, not to mention with getting them you know, meaningful employment, potentially education, if this young person has a family on the outside and trying to reconnect them. So there's a, what folks refer to as collateral consequences. There's a tremendous amount of collateral consequences for being incarcerated from being arrested all the way through incarcerated and spending time in jail. Raise the Age New York is a campaign that supports raising the age of criminal responsibility for children in New York to improve outcomes for both children and public safety. For more information on Raise the Age New York, visit their Facebook page or follow them on Twitter. You're watching the Youth Channel. Be sure to stay updated on our social media pages. To find out more about the Youth Channel, check out our YouTube page where we upload all of your favorite and segments. And for the most part in community. Definitely a lot of healing and definitely a lot of creating. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Add us on Facebook for more updates and news. And see behind the scenes footage of our productions on the Youth Channel's Instagram page. The other piece that's very important is you see there's a finance piece to incarceration that folks may overlook. It's becoming more popular now. In New York State, just to give you an example, for a young person to go to a youth detention center, it costs about $270,000 a year. For a person to be incarcerated in New York State prison, I've heard numbers anywhere between forty dollars to $70,000 a year. Um, and then I've seen the numbers to send a young person to community college for four years, it's about $23,000, right? So there's a clear kind of parallel between what we could be doing with our money that's kind of enriching the lives of young folks and even adults versus what we're doing, currently doing with the money, which is incarcerating and spending tons of money. The question often becomes when you when you sit down and you look at the numbers is why are we doing this? Why are we spending so much money on incarceration as opposed to using it for a more enriching act, enriching activity, education, et cetera, or other social services? And for me, one of the things that I've come to recognize and I think a lot of advocates have is that there's something about the system that is desiring to control and to and to dominate people. I think particularly when you look at communities of color that are targeted by stop and frisk at alarming rates, there's definitely a desire to control and kind of enforce a, a, a very law and order attitude in those communities. And as the researchers come out on stop and frisk, many of these communities and individuals who are being stop and frisked aren't engaging in criminal activity. You have folks who, who wind up in the criminal justice system who engage the vast majority in nonviolent drug related offenses, but we still decide to spend a lot of money on it. So with regards to that, you have a lot of folks <coughs> who are benefiting from the private dollars. Um, you have folks who are investing money in prisons, and you have folks who are reaping the benefit of more folks being sent to prison. Um, and there's a great documentary that recently came out called Kids for Cash that kind of highlights what happened in Pennsylvania around a judge kind of making money off sending youth to a youth detention center. So it's big business. Um, the last point I'll make on that is when I was an undergrad, it was the first time I heard about the term of the prison industrial complex. And Sodexo Marriott happened to be the folks who were serving food in our cafeteria. And folks came to find out that this was also the organization, the corporation, who was making food for a lot of prisons. So they were making food for prisons and they were also making food for a lot of college campuses and we had them removed. But I just say that to say that 
corporations have a tremendous hand in this prison industrial complex because it's profit motivated. Moving through life like the lanes in the freeway, cause life too quick for them brothers like me fast. Moving past 21 but not past 30, the system's fucked up, yeah it's killing us early, uh. Who listening? Brothers ain't listening, rather be glistening, his mama be missing him. Same old song but it hurts the same, Pac said we hopeless from chains to chains. Pain all over my body like veins, the system psychological change from the slave ship to selling cocaine. Is it all the same or is it all a shame? Shh. Is our destiny demise? Shorty staring in my eyes, told me she looking for answers. She just a dancer, told me she living with cancer, mama with AIDS, my brother just brushing his waves like Africans in the slave trade. Jumping in those waves, how many from Katrina died in those waves? You'll die if your ways don't change like the weather's gonna change. Brother, you should change. Living on the brim of reality ain't actually something that we seek. Shorty snuck her a peek in my mind frame. She said it's mind games. She said her mind changed. She don't want to see the truth no more. Rather live in disguise, closing her eyes. Her tears falling fast like an innocence. Predicaments ridiculous. Figure why we killing us. Bigger why we killing us. The police steady lynching us. While black boys' minds spiral to oblivion. Making a living ain't giving. Hardly living is sickening. My mind's tripping and flipping through the archives. Baptized by the blood of our ancestors and our transgressors, live off the harvest we should reap from Harlem to Hempstead. Brothers dying every week. Raise the Age New York is a campaign that supports raising the age of criminal responsibility for children in New York to improve outcomes for both children and public safety. For more information on Raise the Age New York, visit their Facebook page or follow them on Twitter. You're watching the Youth Channel. Be sure to stay updated on our social media pages. To find out more about the Youth Channel, check out our YouTube page where we upload all of your favorite and investing segments. For the most part in definitely a lot of healing and definitely a lot of creating. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Add us on Facebook for more updates and news. And see behind the scenes footage of our productions on the Youth Channel's Instagram page. When you look at some of the work of like Michelle Alexander and she talks about the war on drugs, the reality is, particularly when you look at drug-related crimes, you have at the same rate it's happening in the black community as it's happening in the white community and other communities of color, but the black community has been, and the Latino community increasingly, has been targeted specifically around this kind of prison industrial complex. So you have policies like stop and frisk that target these communities. And given it, give the perspective that crime is proliferating at higher rates in those communities and it's not the case. What that leads to seeing this in the news, seeing it portrayed in the media, is that folks in the communities oftentimes and folks who work in particular institutions feel that it's important to be tough in crime. They feel that youth in the, in the community have kind of are running rampant and out of control and need to be controlled. And the reality is that isn't the case. There is the, the reality is that there's a systematic institutional forces that are making things look a particular kind of way. They're, they're making it look as if this group of individuals is involved in more criminal activity and they aren't. So what that kind of requires for folks who are leading the way in institutions and just folks in the community is to begin to take a different perspective at looking at what they hear about crime. And recognizing that the research shows that black and brown communities are not committing higher rates of uh, criminality than folks in the white community. And what that means is we kind of have to switch our approach on this notion of being tough on crime and, you know, holding these youth accountable. And our approach has to begin to swing to holding institutions accountable and also giving youth what I, what I like to call alternatives to incarceration. So, Generally speaking, when, you, when I think about alternatives to incarceration, there's two pieces um, that I think are very important. So those pieces are trauma-informed care and positive youth development. So trauma-informed care 
gives, what that does is it takes a look at what traumas this person experienced. Is it, is it an educational problem? Is it a mental health problem? Is it a family problem? What's at issue here that's causing a person to maybe engage in behavior that we deem um, unproductive? And then also positive youth development comes in after you've assessed what's at the root of this particular behavior, what trauma is at the root of this behavior. Positive youth development says, let's take a look at this person's gifts and skills and turn some of this trauma into a vehicle that they can express themselves in a positive way, utilizing whatever their particular gifts, talents, and strengths are. So I think at root for any alternative to incarceration is both Positive youth development and trauma-informed care, they kind of work hand in hand, identifying and, ass and assessing the issue or the dilemma and also partnering with the solution to transform it. Now, in terms of specifics in regards to alternatives to incarceration, there's such a variety of programs that exist out there that are very cost effective, particularly when you talk about the cost of incarceration, but are highly underutilized. So there's approaches that um, put youth in um, wilderness programs where they spend time outside of, of their, their particular community. There's therapeutic models. There's also models of engaging youth in more theatrical performance. Um, so there's just a tremendous amount of alternative to incarceration programs that exist that aren't getting the funding focus and kind of highlighting that they need. Um, recently, the federal government has begun to take a closer look at what programs are um, succeeding. And I think when you look at what happens with Raise the Age and the shift in youth justice in New York State, we're hoping that alternative to incarceration models become the wave of the future. And it's a program that works with um, young girls specifically who have been involved in the system. And I think they're a good example of programs that work because what the program does is it has a specific niche and it realizes that youth have specific challenges that need specific attention. And I think that's what makes an alternative to incarceration program successful, that it recognizes that it has particular skills to address particular needs of particular uh, demographic of youth. Um, there's also programs like um, Center for Community Alternatives, which in cases which both, you know, have a variety of models of mentoring and trying to transform youth lives and having mentors and also a family participation model where the family's participating in this youth development cultivation so that, you know, a strength-based approach is really focused on. So those are some of the programs I would highlight. Yeah. For the stars so you can touch the sky, complexities of this world got you wondering why, but at the same token, you got to be smoking, overstanding the lessons I'm stressing to adolescents, confessions and complexions hindering our progression, oppression from an earlier date fogging the pearly gates. We running fast, but we staying in the same place. Unfortunate victims falling prey to the same fate. A dollar short, a day late. A white Jesus can't claim my faith. 400 years of tears sprawled across my face, death and destruction sprawled across my race. Intimidating. Features in the black face, the presence of genius in my mind, state the crime rate, creating a slave state. A dollar short, a day late. Can't post bail, so we destined to fail. Sometimes it seems like we living in hell. How many of our young brothers are living in jail or on the corner? Living for a sale, he got his mind locked up because he living for a sale. A couple of books is his course to freedom. He used to cry because his pops ain't read him. Where did it lead him? A life of poverty and misplaced freedom. The young black man succeeding is a divine step. With time left, we grasping for our last breath. An epidemic still affecting our mind. The middle passage got us all living drastic. That's it. Thank you. I hope they weren't bad. <laughs> Raise the Age New York is a campaign that supports raising the age of criminal responsibility for children in New York to improve outcomes for both children and public safety. For more information on Raise the Age New York, visit their Facebook page or follow them on Twitter. You're watching the Youth Channel. Be sure to stay updated on our social media pages. To find out more about the Youth Channel, check out our YouTube page where we upload all of your favorite and segments. And for the most part in Definitely a lot of healing and definitely a lot of creating. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter 
Add us on Facebook for more updates and news. And see behind the scenes footage of our productions on the Youth Channel's Instagram page. I think young people can get involved in the Raise the Age campaign in a few ways. I think one, just really going online and informing yourself about what's happening, what this issue is all about, and spreading the word, whether that's not, whether that's among your friends, on social media, in school. I mean, you could also reach out to the Correctional Association of New York at our website, www.correctionalassociation.org, find my name, Angelo Pinto, find my number, which is on there, and find out a way that you get more involved in the campaign, whether that's we have a legislative advocacy day coming up, we're going to go to Albany and have meetings with legislative, legislators in the Senate to let them know more about the issue and try to get them on board. We have some community events that are always happening that folks can get involved in. We come to speak to schools um, and faith-based organizations all the time. So there's a variety of ways in which folks can reach out to us to get involved, whether it's with what we're doing or spreading the word on their own. We also have partnered with an organization called Her Story in Long Island, which is a memoir writing organization that writes helps folks that are incarcerated write their story. Um, and we just recently put out a book called Taking Back Our Children. And we think the book is a good way for folks to spread the word um, and learn about specific stories of youth who've come in contact with the system. We often talk about the statistics, but you get to hear the specific, specific stories. And sharing those stories with friends often um, is a way that the message resonates a little louder than sheer statistics. I think one thing I would say is that it's, definite, it's often a challenging space to find yourself in. And um, I've heard folks, interestingly enough, a family member, close family member of mine was incarcerated as an adult um, at 16 years old. So I understand how challenging being in that space can be, both for the individual and the family. It's often embarrassing. And one of the things I've spoke to a parent advocate, and she often says, is we have to kind of get rid of some of the stigma behind youth who find themselves in, this, in the system and families who find themselves there because a youth may be there. Because some of what's happening is because youth are making mistakes that other youth make, but they're being criminalized for it. So some of it is just the way the system is operating in particular communities. So in that regard, there's really nothing to be ashamed of. My advice to folks who find themselves in, those, in that predicament is not to feel discouraged but to find places in which they feel empowered. And some of that may mean reaching out to organizations like the Correctional Association, um, Community Connections for Youth, Youth Represent, Youth Power. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of organizations around New York State and within New York City who are working on youth justice issues and who have attorneys or even advocates on staff that can guide you through the process um, and even let, and, and accompany you sometimes if you're, if you're going to a case or even just ask questions about what is it that you can do? Um, can you, how can you get in contact with your child? And sometimes you might just need someone that you can talk to and support you as you move through um, the process because it's a challenging one. Um, but I think one thing that I would say to parents is that you have a right to know what's going on with your child. Um, folks in the system may make it difficult for you to find out that information, but you have a right to know what's going on with your child. And you also have a right to hold the system accountable, um, which often requires you partnering with individuals who may know the system a little better and can educate you or also may have an in into what's happening in the system and can kind of just make you aware. So I think the, the most important piece or a way to kind of categorize it is become aware of the system um, by partnering with an organization or an individual that can share what they know um, and then kind of activate your own power by, you know, contacting the system to find out what's going on with your child and figuring out in what ways you can be an advocate. Sometimes the best way to advocate may not be with your particular child, but sometimes you can partner with an organization and be an advocate to share with parents your stories and empower them as they move through challenges. You're watching the Youth Channel. Be sure to stay updated on our social media pages. To find out more about the Youth Channel, check out our YouTube page where we upload all of your favorite and segments. And for the most part in community. Definitely a lot of healing and definitely a lot of creating. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Add us on Facebook for more updates and news. And see behind the scenes footage of our productions on the Youth Channel's Instagram page. 
I think when you think about Rage the Age, because Rage the Age has become the super, it's becoming a bigger and bigger issue, and likely as the year spins, you'll hear more and more about it. For the advocates who are working in youth justice reform for a long time, one thing that is clear to us is that raising the age of criminal responsibility is one piece of the puzzle to address youth justice. We know that raising the age of criminal responsibility or any one reform doesn't transform the system, but we recognize it's a part of transforming this larger system. And for me, when you think about youth justice and raising the age, it's kind of the gateway to the adult system. And I recognize that if we address this piece here, we're, we're kind of removing um, a big piece of this pipeline that exists to incarceration. And I think it's important when folks are advocating learning about an issue to recognize how this issue is connected to the other issue. So how is this connected to other juvenile justice or youth justice issues? How is that connected to the incarceration of adults? And then once you understand the system of incarceration and how the pieces are connected, what that allows you to do is take a broader perspective and say, well, how is incarceration connected to education, which we spoke about? How is that connected to the finance system, which we spoke about? How is it even connected to healthcare and what's happening in my community? And it gives you a broader perspective of how all of these challenges are interconnected. And I think that is what's going to empower the community as we move forward. We have to d begin to understand how all of these systems are interconnected and also not completely rely on the system to address the needs that we have. Because some of what we'll have to do is really build community strength and build a new system that prevents youth and adults from kind of being swept into incarceration. Reach for the stars so you can touch the sky. Complexities of this world got you wondering why, but at the same token, you gotta be smoking. Overstanding the lessons, I'm stressing the adolescence. Confessions and complexions hindering our progression. Oppression from an earlier date, fogging the pearly gates. We running fast, but we staying in the same place. Unfortunate victims falling prey to the same fate. A dollar short. A day late, a white Jesus can't claim my faith. 400 years of tears sprawled across my face, death and destruction sprawled across my race. Intimidating, features in the black face, the presence of genius in my mind state, the crime rate creating a slave state. A dollar short, a day late, can't post bail so we destined to fail. Sometimes it seems like we living in hell. How many of our young brothers are living in jail or on the corner? Living for a sale, he got his mind locked up cause he living for a sale. A couple of books is his cost of freedom. He used to cry cause his pops ain't read him. Where did it lead him? A life of poverty and misplaced freedom. The young black man succeeding is a divine step. With time left, we grasping for our last breath and epidemic still affecting our mind. The middle passage got us all living drastic. Raise the Age New York is a campaign that supports raising the age of criminal responsibility for children in New York to improve outcomes for both children and public safety. For more information on Raise the Age New York, visit their Facebook page or follow them on Twitter.